So anyone interested in any topic or any data, so do any project in uh, animal detection? I'm looking for a reason that you're all here. Go ahead. Text. I, ideally, I would find something on Kaggle from previous competitions. Good. Anything else? I'm interested in uh, uh, signals. Yeah, and uh, I haven't worked with any audio, but I think it would be. Can you probably signal as well? For sure, we'll do sequential data, but for signal, we might do signal, but let's see. Even I was thinking about, okay, there are different, uh, okay, for sure, we'll do signal, but what kind of signal? It would be based on the model that you want to use. Because as, as we saw that, uh, anomaly can happen in any kind of environment. Even like a stock market can be like a something like signal, which is like a sequential, which mean, it means sometime you can see some like not some abnormal behavior in a stock market that you can say, okay, something is happening. Maybe a president is tweeting about something, but it can be something that you can say, oh, something is happening. There's a spike or there's a change in, in, a, in, in a way that, is, that all those stock are, change, are, are behaving. That's why you can maybe say that, okay, maybe something is wrong, raising a flag, and asking the, I don't know, the portfolio manager or even the one who is broker, you can say, okay, something is off, do something if you want to do something. Or it can be just as a signal, it can be like a video as well, not just signal, signal. It means all those autonomous driving car, they're recording all those signals and all those video. And the one of the things that they are doing is like that. They are, yes, they want to detect all those street, street, all those things, but the other thing is like, Whenever they see something unusual that they haven't seen before in a video, so it's like a sequence of video, sequence of a uh, picture, then they should say that, okay, I haven't seen something, something is going on, something I haven't seen before, maybe, I don't know, someone running the street in highway or something. Then it should alert maybe the driver, something that we have right now, maybe in, in I don't know, in, in uh, Uber or something like that, maybe in Tesla, that they are alerting the driver that something is happening, something that I can't detect fully, and I need attention. It's like system one and system two things, that sometimes system one, which is machine learning, can't handle the situation, and it should transfer it to system two, which, which in this case is a human. So yes, there are applications for it, but we'll try to. Anything like sequential data, like time series, I'm really interested in I think you're quite competent. Yes, they are. I'm not sure about the second session, but for the third session, I guess we have to kind of do that. Because, see, you can handle lots of uh, simple, I would say, uh, oh, they are using a statistical model. Using classical model, you should be able to handle uh, all those out layer which are a bit sophisticated, but not that much. But when it comes to super complicated uh, data, like even in fraud, as I said, a human is a source of fraud. So it's trying its best to make that fraud to be super similar to the normal one. And then the only way that you can handle it is using maybe a deep learning model. One of the things that I, I was trying to cover in the, uh, and hopefully I will cover in the third session is about GANs. Because one of the things that GANs, all those GANs models trying to do is like, there's a generator which try to learn the distribution of the data so that it can kind of draw a sample from it. But the, the thing that the detector is doing is trying to be able to tell the difference between fake and, no, and normal, or, or maybe the true label. So then if you manage to learn the GAN in a way that the discriminator is good enough that can tell the difference between fake and a real, then you have a good, actually, anomaly detector as well. So for that, you can have, a, I don't know, a, it can be a signal, the generator can be maybe an RNN, or it can be just image, so it can be CNN. Or even for autoencoder, that the whole purpose of it is re reconstructing the input, instead of just using uh, a normal network as an encoder, you can use CNN for image, or you can use RNN for signal. So we will talk about them more in maybe session three, but yeah. Why people are asking if uh, uh, 
something about fake news would also be interesting. Yes, yes, <laughs> I've seen that. Uh, for sure, I will try to look for it. Uh, because as I said, one of the application is actually uh, fake news right now because I guess Facebook heavily invested in it. Uh, because they're... What? No. <laughs> Can you distinguish uh, genuine messages on Slack from bot generated ones? Yeah, something like that. So it means like, you, exactly. So see, there was a workshop, well, I mean, maybe the last uh, session of, uh, I, I guess, it was paper reading session that last Monday, I guess, that I missed, was about generating sentence, I guess, generating maybe text. Uh, I missed that uh, session. Yeah, well, I should watch the video. But this, based on the thing that I read was, how can you generate sentence? How can you generate maybe a phrase or text or something like that? And in GAN, you are, as one of the basic examples was, can you generate a real, kind of real data, like a face or, a, or, I don't know, a car or something which looks real? And if you see, to be able to generate those texts, to be able to generate those image, you always, because it's GAN, you always has a discriminator. And the only job of that discriminator is to tell the difference. So yes, uh, if you manage to have a good generator model, basically you should be able to, by adversarial process, you should be able to have a good discriminator model as well. Because if you are using GAN for it, then you have both of it. Usually in Whenever they are talking about GANs, people are mostly talking about the generator part because it's cool to be able to generate something, something real. It's like, oh, the model can actually make a new image, or the model can speak, the model can, I don't know, uh, come up with a sentence or a text which is meaningful. But he here, in this workshop for the third, se uh, for the third session, I'm gonna talk about the discriminator one. The part of the GAN, which, which is only job is to tell a difference, and you want to say how can we use it, how can we improve it to be able to tell the difference between these things. So, if the bot has been trained using GAN, we should come up with that discriminator, and then we should be able to tell the difference. And maybe it's one of the way that we can come up with a thing that we can tell the difference between maybe fake news or not by generating fake news, <laughs> and then to find it. Online people are also saying that uh, time series based anomaly detection would be great. Yes, that, uh, as I said, all those a uh, stock market, or or there are lots of data about the weather, the change in weather, uh, or uh, maybe if we can come up with the with the signal, or uh, even if maybe video, I should see if we can handle that, those data here. But yes. Because one of the, because we, as I said, we have two type of anomaly. One of them is a global one. The other one is a contextual one. And to be able to see if the model is capable of finding an anomaly within the context, you need sequential data. And not today, but hopefully for the second and third one, we will try to cover it. Sure. And we can have. Is there an area or subspace in this field related to anomaly prediction? Are there predictive analytic models for anomalies? Like what? Like when I said Well, in the same way that we're trying to detect anomalies. Like when's the next financial crash? Or whatever. Or oh, you mean? To, <laughs> oh, you wanna? Okay, you're saying that to predict if anomaly is gonna happen in the future. In, like and samples or and some, you know, but a predictive model. Is this an area in this literature? Uh, that's interesting, but then I won't call them. Okay, then it would be supervised one, right? Because in, you want if you want to do a prediction task, you mean you haven't seen that data before, but you want to predict. And to be able to predict, you should have already seen some sample that after that sample there was a I don't know anomaly in, in the future. So then you can uh, maybe. Yes, especially if you are dealing with maybe sequential data, 
you should be able to do that. Like you are saying finance, like I don't know, any crash in the market is like that. If you believe that, <coughs> if you have access to lots of sequential data, and there is a change in the data, let's say even what you are talking about, Amari, it can be, let's say, in healthcare, one of the things that you're doing in Ocean is prediction of mortality, which you can say mortality is like an anomaly, is like a crash in the market, but it's a crash in human, like you will be dead afterward. So Maybe. can you predict mortality using all the sequence of claim that we have seen before, like prediction of it? Okay. Yes, it's possible. Maybe this is worth clarifying then. So as a professional in the space, do you distinguish between rare events and anomalies? Are they different things, or do you treat them the same because they're, you know, they live somewhere out in a far part of a distribution? Uh, again, it would be, okay. It depends on the application. Some, okay, in, in classification or something like that, sometimes we call it rare even as like a rare class. Some rare uh, groups of event that can happen, but we know characteristic of it. It means if you want to predict, let's say, crash in the market or mortality, or some rare event that you know some characteristic about it, but you don't have enough sample for it. It's like, and you have super unbalanced, data, like imbalanced data that one of the classes is super rare which means like you have just few samples from it, which kind of will make it to be kind of like a few shot learning or even zero shot learning okay. that you know. Maybe we just assume it's reasonably rare, not yes. super rare. So if you know, if, if you have a class of data that you don't have enough samples from it, you don't have enough information about it, but you know the characteristic of it, then it kind of, as you said, is a rare event prediction, like mortality in, in healthcare data, maybe it is a, rare event prediction, or maybe uh, the people are recording ECG signal. The chance of you getting heart failure maybe is rare. It's not happening every day, but, but you know the characteristic of it is heart failure. In anomaly, which would be, I guess, kind of like a, a bigger umbrella of all these things, is anything which is not normal. So it means a rare event prediction would be a subset of anomaly detection, because anomaly detection means Sometimes you know some characteristic about it, you know it's heart failure, so something that if you get enough data, you should be able to do prediction. But because you don't have data at this very moment, you won't be able to predict them and then you have to maybe find them in some way. But anomaly can be like a, something that even you haven't seen at all, something unusual, something not rare, something that, not, that is not existed. Is not, is not even in your training data. That's why sometimes they call it like a novelty detection. Maybe, <coughs> I don't know, there, is, there might be a sample of change, maybe if you're recording, I don't know, uh, ECG signal, it can be something that you are not expected, you're expecting things like that happens at all. It's like rare, like if maybe you are driving the street, I don't know, a tree fall, something like that. It's like you're not, you're not even expecting something like that to happen. It's not like a rare event, it's like superly unusual things. So that's why you don't have a, even any class for it. You can't predict it because you had no idea that that thing exists at all. So for me, that's the distinction, but maybe there are lots of definition of it. We can review it. 